Hi everyone, thank you for coming for the 10th lecture uh, in network security. So, we started nicely, we spoke about symmetric, right? We spoke about asymmetric cryptography where we have one key, secret key. Now we're going to talk about asymmetric, where you can have two keys, one called public and one called private, right? Uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the asymmetric uh, encryption, we don't call it public and the private, we call it secret key. Secret key, because it's a secret key. And here we call it public, because one of them is public, everybody knows, and one is private, for you, you nobody else to know. So, we'll see, we'll give you a comparison huh, and how it, it works and all of that, okay? So, so, symmetric and asymmetric key cryptography will exist in parallel. So, there is nothing called all technology and, uh, and no technology. They are existing in parallel. They have different applications. So, we use them all together all the time and continue to serve the community. We actually believe that they are complements, complements each other. Okay? The advantages of one can compensate it for the disadvantage of the other one. We'll see that, okay? All right, so basically, in the symmetric and asymmetric key, uh, uh, the symmetric key cryptography is based on a sharing secrecy. Sharing secrecy, all right? Asymmetric key cryptography is based on personal secrecy, one secret key. And here we get a share a secret, which is a public uh, key, as we'll see. So asymmetric key cryptography uses two separate keys, two separate keys. The first one we call it a private, which is private. And the second one is public, which is public. Everybody knows about it, all right? So look in here what will happen. So Bob would like, okay, Bob, where is Bob? This is Bob, right? And this is Alice. So Alice wants to send a message to Bob, and the only person needs to read it is Bob. So Bob has a public key somewhere, everywhere, in his web page. So Alice takes Bob's public key and encrypts the data. So encrypt, Alice encrypted the data with Bob's public key. Once you encrypt it with Bob's public, public key, the only way to read it back using what? Pops private, private key. key. All right? So it will be sent in the communication channel. Okay? All right? It's going to come in here. So Bob will use his own private key to read the message. All right? So now when I encrypt, I encrypt with the other person public key. With the other person's public <coughs> key. As simple as this. Done. We finished. Pro public key, private key, and they have to work together. So if you lock with the first one, you can't unlock with the other one. Where is the problem? Is there a problem? How we can choose the keys? How we can choose two keys that one work with the other one? Right? That's where the algorithms come, right? All right, let's continue. So what will happen in here, we're gonna have something, something called key generation procedure. So in the key generation procedure, we'll issue two pairs. One is public and one mm -hmm. private. So the private will remain for that person and the public will be shared to everybody. So the public key distribution channel, all right? And uh, so again, in here, if Alice would like to send a message to Bob, she has to get the Bob's public key and use it to encrypt the data, send it in, in secure channel. It will be received, and Bob will be able to read it through private key. All right? So before encryption and decryption, we have something else, which is key generation. Key generation. And we have to share it in the public. I didn't get that. Okay, so so Bob has to generate two pair of keys, public and private. Mm -hmm. The public will share it to everybody. So Alice can know it, John can know it, Noah can know it, 
Susan can know it. Everybody can know the public key. The private will remain with Bob. So Alice would like to send a message to who? To Bob. So it has to go to get the public public key, which is posted somewhere. Use it and send the data. Bob would use a private key too. Okay? All right? So we have to generate, Bob has to generate two keys. All right? So there is an algorithm for key generation. And there is an algorithm for encryption. And there is an algorithm for decryption. Before, we had algorithm for encryption and decryption only. Now we have to have algorithm for key generation. All right. So, as you know, there is a plain text and cyber. So, unlike in symmetric key cryptography, plain text and cyber text are treated as integers in a symmetric key cryptography. Before, it was a string of digits. In here, it's integers. It's integers. So, we have to convert our data into integers. Why? Before, what we used to do. Permutations, right? Substitution and permutations, right? Yeah. And here we do mathematical operation. So mathematical operations, you do it in what? In, 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 in alphabets or in digits? In digits. In digits. So the data has to be digits. So exactly what you're going to do. So to generate the ciphertext, you're going to have a function. The input to the function is the plain text and the public key. Using the public key, you could create the cipher text. To get the plain text, you can have another function called G using the private key and the cipher link. And the cipher link. All right. So there is a very important fact that is sometimes misunderstood, which is the advent of asymmetric key cryptography does not eliminate the need for symmetric key cryptography. Okay. All right? Symmetric key cryptography uh, okay. is used for what? For hard disk, hard disk encryption, for message encryption. Okay? The asymmetric key used for digital signatures for different purposes, as we'll see in a second. Right? Okay. So the main idea behind asymmetric key cryptography is the concept of the trapdoor one-way function. We are using function. Function is a math, math function, which deals with digit. So what is the what kind of function we're gonna use? Called one-way function. Okay? What does it mean when one function? You could go from x to y but you cannot go from y, y to x. x so for example in here a function as a rule mapping a, do a domain to a range so we have a domain and elements and we have a range and elements so we could go x to where y for example mm -hmm. y here equal a function of x mm -hmm. all right so that's the f that's the f reverse okay f reverse so you could F reverse. Okay, it's a one way. This is two way function in here. This is a two way function. All right? So one way, way function. However, this is one way function, but we can go back because we have something called a trap door. A trap door. Okay, we'll talk about trap door in a second. Okay? So, one way function, or we call it OWF, one way function. F is easy to compute. What is F? This is F. Okay? F reverse, F inverse, okay, is difficult to compute. All right? So what we do, if we have one way function with a trap door, then what we'll have, given Y and a trap door, X can be computed easily. So this will be computed easily. So what we are using in here one more one more one more we use it a one way function with a trap door okay with a trap door all right so example okay so
So when n is a large, is large, if a number is large, n equals p times q, and p and q from math lecture, p and q they are prime numbers. Mm -hmm. They have to be prime numbers. So if we can divide any number, big number, in two numbers, multiply them together, and these two numbers are primes, are primes, okay, is a one-way function. So given p, if you have a p, okay, and a q, it is always easy to calculate n, right? If you have p n and q, yeah. can you calculate n? Yes. yes. All right. Given n, it is very difficult to compute p and q. If the n is so big, it's like 300 digits. Is it easy to calculate uh, p and q, to know what's p and q? Mm -hmm. It's very hard. Possible, if you have a very complex supercomputer, okay, but it's very hard. So this is what we call it one-way function, all right? Remember that when you decrypt, you need to decrypt, decrypt it in real, real time. You don't want to wait 100 years to get the decryption, right? Right? So it's okay. So it is always easy to calculate n given n. It is very difficult to compute P and Q. This is a factorization problem. And again, we explain about explain factorization in the previous chapter. Sir, this is, has nothing to do with the Diffie-Hellman problem? Uh, it could. I'm going to talk about it in the next chapter. Okay? All right. So when n is large, the function y equal, if you need to calculate y, it will equal, I mean, this is another example. The function y equal x to bar k mod n is a trapdoor one-way function. So this is one-way function. This is a trapdoor one-way function. Y, if you are given x and k, x and k, and n, it's easy to calculate y, right? Right? It's very easy, right? It's this. So if you have x and k and n, it's very easy to calculate y. Given y now, and k, and n, it is very difficult to calculate x. Very difficult to calculate x. So if you know the y, you know k, you know n, you cannot calculate x. It's very difficult. Why? Because this is the discrete, uh, discrete logarithm problem, which is very intensive computing, right? However, if we know the trap door, that's a key. If we know the trap door, what is the trap door? K prime. K prime, okay. Such as K times K prime equals 1 mod phi n. Phi n we explained in the last uh, lecture, okay. Okay. We can use X, if we know the trap door, we could use X equal to Y to the power K prime mod n to find x. So the trap door here is k prime. If you don't know k prime, it's a one-way function. If you know k prime, it becomes a trap door one-way function. The trap door is the way it will make the computation is easy for it. Alright? So what's the, def what's the definition for k prime? Here. k times k prime will mod, uh, uh, gives you one uh, phi n, phi n, okay? What is phi n? n, it will be divided in two primes, okay? So, if we have two n, for example, okay, two times two, let's two, have two primes, two and, or three and seven, right? These are primes. So n equals, right, which is 21. <coughs> phi n, so this is called the Q, and this we call it P. So phi n equals what? Equals Q minus 1 times P minus 1. Q minus 1, how much? 2, Two times? 7 minus 1, 6, right? Equals 12. That's phi n. If we go to the previous chapter, we explain that, okay? All right? All right. All right, so... All right. All right, so, so what's the difference between example 10.1 and 10.2? 
This is one way function. How about this? Is a trapdoor one function. All right. So let's take. A, a, I mean, let's explain it with one of the protocols, NAB, NAPSAC uh, crypto system, NAPSAC crypto system. So the, the definition says that okay, we have A, which is felt of a matrix, one row, A1, A2, AK, and X is X1, X2, and up to XK. So what is the size of the A? It's like K digits, for example, and then here is K. So to, to calculate the knapsack, okay, for A and X, we multiply and add. So A1 times X1 plus A2 times A, uh, X2 times A2 until the end. The X's are digits 0 and 1, so either 0 or 1, right? And in here could be any digits. So, for example, if, if I... Uh, if I uh, So, so I could use, for example, A equals 3, okay, 6, 7, 2. And X equals 0, 1, 1, 0. So the knapsack will be how much? Three times 0 plus... 6 times 1 plus 7 times 1 plus 2 2 times 0 let's make the times like that to make it more clear so that equals 0 plus 6 plus 7 plus 0 and make it equals to 15 alright ok so given A and X, it is, it is easy to calculate S. You see, we calculated it very easy. That's a rule, that's a function. Easy, right? However, given S and A, it is very difficult to... So if I have 13 and I have the A, is it easy to calculate X? No. It's very difficult to calculate A, X. All right? It is difficult, okay. So, to make a trap door, to make as a trap door, we make it increasing. So we make it increasing. So AI is bigger than all the previous ones. So for example, this does not apply. Let's try one more. So for example, okay, okay, so, all right, so A equals, let's start with a three. Okay, what could be the next one? Four. Four. What could be the next one? Five. No? Eight. Huh? Eight. Three plus seven? Eight. Three plus seven, how much? Seven. It has to be bigger than... Eight. So oh. it has to be eight. Mm -hmm. Or seven, or nine, or whatever. So now, eight plus seven, how much? Fifteen. Fifteen. So this could be eighteen, for example. Eight. Or twenty. Maybe yeah. twenty. Okay, the next one has to be bigger than fifteen plus twenty which is 35, so you could say 40. This is good. So it's increasing, right? So it should be more than the sum of the previous numbers. Previous ones, and that's what we have in here. So okay. AI is bigger all the previous ones. Okay? Why? Because we need to be able to calculate the x's. Let's take example. So that's the algorithm. Look in here. So as we, as a very trivial example, assume that A equals 17, 25, 46, 95, 201, 400. Are they increasing? So let's try it. 17 plus 25, how much? 42. How much? 42. 42. 25, 20, uh, 32. The next one, 40, 47. It's bigger, right? If you add these together, the 95 will be, 94 will be more, and so on and so forth. So it apply the condition. And S equals 272. So we know now A, and we know S. S. We need to calculate X. What is X? Zeros or ones, right? 
So, argument. The table thing one shows how the tuple x is found using inverse knapsack sum. Routine in algorithm 10 one. In this case, x will equal this. So what we do, so we start from that, we know, we know what is the size of, uh, of x, how many elements? Six. six. Why? Because we have six in here. Eight. So we start six. from six, right? So you put the ai, how much ai? The last one? 400. 400. How much s? 272. 272. Okay, we'll check if S bigger than the AI. So S no. is S no. 272 bigger than 400? No. False. Then definitely the X, how much? Zero. 6 equals 0. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? You understand this, okay? Then now we switch. So now we keep in S 272. We move 272 in here and we go with the sixth, next one. How much? Yeah. 201. So is this bigger than this? Yes. True. Then definitely x5 is yeah. 1. Then the difference is how much? Yeah. Remaining 71. Yeah. We move 71 here and I will move the third one, 94. So is 71 bigger than 94? False. No, false. Then x4 how much? Yeah. 0. And then we remain 71. We did not subtract that, right? We move it here and 46. We keep continuing, right? And this is in here. So we were able to have this trap door when when we made a condition that A, it will be increasing. If I don't have that condition, I will not be able to do that. Okay? And you see, we were able. So this is one-way function with a trap door. All right? So this is an example, for example, secret communication with an AppSack. Okay, so again, any algorithm is like that. So the first thing we start with where? With the key generation, with the key generation. So in here we have, you have to select B, which is B1, B2, B, K. Select B, okay? Then select modulus N and R, okay? Modulus N and R, okay? Then calculate A, all right? Then the private key is three elements, which is B, R and N. The public key would be is A. So A you share it with every one. A you share it with every one, and these you keep them as a private. And there is an algorithm. So this is an algorithm to generate the key. And there is algorithm here for encryption. So encryption, what you do? Knapsack sum X, okay, with A. What's A? Is the public key. What's X? is the data. You're going to send it. And there's a procedure in here how to reverse it. So for example, you start with S prime equals R minus 1. Where is R? It was selected as a private. Times S. What is S? Is the message delivered. Right? Then X prime inverse and then X uh, permute for X. Uh, okay. So algorithm for generation algorithm for encryption algorithm for for decryption public key private key public key private key all right so what what made it possible is the trap door we have created so this is an example this is a trivial uh, very trivial uh, example so in here let's take a Let's think about the key generation. So key generation. So for key generation, okay, Bob creates the super increasing, increasing tuple, B. So 7, 11, 19, 39, 79, 157, 315. So that's super increasing. That's step number one. Then Bob chooses the modulus N900 and R37. Okay? Choose two, two prime numbers, two, two numbers, right? Then the then and, uh, and then create a uh, and two four five three seven one is the permutation table, all right? Choose a permutation. So he, he first of all gonna choose a B, then choose N, then choose R, then choose a permutation table. You know it's permutation table to switch 
the location in the in the in the arrow, right? So Bob now <coughs> calculates the tuple R. Okay, tuple R. Okay, right? So tuple uh, uh, R. Let me check this. So the tubal R is calculated according to uh, a tubic, uh, where is it? T, I'm sure, the tubal T, okay? And there is a room for that part of the algorithm. Tubal T equals to TI equals TI equals R times B. So all you have to do, where is R? How much is R? 37 times 7 will give you this number. 37 times 11 will give you this and so on and so forth all right the algorithm right then bob calculates the tuple a which is permutation of t so this is t so the first one it will so this is the t you have to put permute it so the first one we start with number four where is number four one two three four the four becomes first the second one is number two where is number two four or seven becomes four or seven then three, then five, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Five is four or nine, for example. Uh, what is one? Two, after four, two, five. One, two, three, four, five. Two, twenty-three, and so on and so forth. You permute, you rearrange them, mm -hmm. right? And then Bob publicly announces A. This is A, what is A in here? What is A? is the public key the public key what is the private key b and r and n all right then after that what you're gonna do this is for key generation now suppose alice wants to send a single character g we said in asymmetric what you are transmitting digits so i have to convert g to a digit so G, okay, so that uh, she uses seven bit ASCII representation of G, which is this one. Okay, in a binary. And it create the triple X. So what is the data we're going to send? 1100111. This is the X. Okay? Then after that, what we have to do, we have to calculate the knapsack. Knapsack, how it will be created? So you multiply the X with the A, okay, it gives you 2165. So that's the data encrypted. So what's the date? What's the plain text? G, which represented in a binary like this. What is the data will be transmitted? 2165. This is encrypted. Encrypted, right? So now at the receiver, Bob can decrypt the cipher 2165. So what you do? Bob calculates S prime, which is S times R inverse both N. It will give you 527. Bob calculates the X prime, which is the inverse inverse uh, uh, knapsack sum, will give you this, you know, this matrix, right? Now, Bob calculates X permutation, so we have to arrange it with the same permutation. So it, you know, number one, you go, where is it? Number four. So number four, where is number four? It's one, came in here. Then, number two, where is number two? One, will go in here, and so on and so forth, right? And by the end, it'll give you this binary, it will give you the G. Okay? It will give you the G. Clear? All right, so what we have learned so far, we have to use one-way function. Our plain text has to be digit, all right? We have three algorithms. Algorithm four, key generation. It's gonna generate how many keys? Two, one public and one private. We're gonna use encryption algorithm using the public key of the receiver. And then we're gonna do decryption using the private key of the receiver. Okay, as simple as that.
condition for the for, for condition in here that we have to have a back door, back door, or trap door that we could uh, easily calculate here, yeah, you know. Uh, RSA, I'm not sure why this is stopped working. So we'll talk about RSA. It's the most common public key algorithm. It's the RSA crypto, uh, cryptography system named for the, the, the inventors, three inventors, okay? All right, so. So basically, what what you have uh, the, when you look at the complexity of the operation, okay. So for, for to create the cipher, there is uh, there is two keys, okay. The first key is a public is a the public key which is E, and a private key which is D, all right. So to create the cipher, okay, C equals P to the power E mod N. This is polynomial complexity, which is easy to calculate. And to calculate the, the, the plain text, it's C to the power D, which is, what is D? Is the private key. So in here we have two keys, one public and one private. So what is a public key is? E. What's the private key is? D. Okay, actually, what's a public key? Two things, N and E. What's the private key is? The D. All right. So we have to calculate E and D that they could work together. So if you power use E as a power for the plain text, and if you use the cyber text with a power D, it will give you the result. Okay, that's the tactic, right? All right. So RSA uses modular exponentiation for uh, encryption decryption uh, to attack it. E needs to calculate P. Okay, if you if you if you calculate C using this way to calculate P, you have to calculate C to the power E, and this is very hard to complicate to co to compute. It take you for ever to uh, compute. All right, so. So encryption and decryption, that's what will happen. Let's take a look at the key. Let's take a look at the key generation. So in the key generation, what you have to do? You have to pick public and, and we have to pick two numbers. P and a Q. P and a Q have to be primes, okay, and not equal. Then you calculate N. How you calculate N? P times a Q. Then you select E and D. We'll show you how to select an E and D to reverse each other. E and N will become the public key. You share it with everyone. D will become the private key. So very simple. What's a public key? E and N. What's a private key? Is D. If you have a data, all you have to do is power it to E mod N and send it. The data you receive power it to the, uh, it will be C power D mod N will give you the data. So that's the algorithm. So we know the algorithm for key generation. And we know the algorithm for encryption. And we know the algorithm for uh, decryption. 
the only thing we need to know now how to calculate E and D to work together right we need to figure that out so two algebraic structures for encryption decryption is R in ZN plus uh, uh, multiplication and key generation group is in Z phi N so RSE used two algebraic structures, R and G. R is A, tuple E, and is the public key, and D is the private uh, key. So very simple. What is the algorithm in here? Very simple. So for key generation, we choose P and Q. We don't equal to each other. They are primes. You, we calculate N. Then after that, we calculate phi N. What is phi N from previous lecture? It's P minus 1 times Q minus 1. That's phi N. We save it in phi N. Then we select E such, such as E is bigger than 1, larger than 1, and smaller than phi N. And E is a co-prime with a phi N. A co-prime with a phi N. Alright? So, now you select E any number okay any number in the range it has to be from 1 to 5n right so in our example where is 5 you calculate 5n in here or whatever so it was 12 right the 5n so 5n if it's 12 the number you're gonna choose is between 2 and 11 2 and 11 right then you calculate the reverse the multiplicative reverse of e minus 1 to be d multiplicative reverse of uh, it will be D alright so public key will be E and N and the private key will be D and that's what you're gonna share that's what you will share alright so this is the algorithm for encryption so encryption okay and this is for decryption let's take example of this thing right away go for example okay Okay, this is an example. Okay, that's an example. So Bob chooses 7 and 11. Is 7 a prime? Yeah. 11 yeah. prime. This P and a Q. Mm -hmm. As P and a Q. And calculates N. What is N? P, P times Q. Q. How much? 77. 77. Clear? The value of phi N. What is phi N? Mm -hmm. 7 minus 1 times 11. 11 minus 1. How much? 60. 60. So now he chooses two exponents, E and D. Now that's a trick. Steps. that You have to choose E and D. E has to be in range from where to where? 2 to 59. Okay? 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 But it has to be in Z60. That means, what, the, what does it mean it has to be in Z60? Asterisk. That means it has to have multiplicative inverse. Right? So one of in that range, but it has to have multiplicative inverse. Right? We already studied that, right? So if he chooses E to be 13, okay, 13, okay, then D is 37. Because the multiplicative inverse of 13 in Z60 asterisk is 37. And you know how to calculate the multiplicative inverse, right? So if you multiply 13 times 37 mod 60 will give you how much? One. One. All right? So note that E times D mod 60 will give you one. They are inverses of each. Now imagine that Alice wants to send a plane takes five to Bob. A plane takes five. Okay, five. All right, Bob. She uses the public exponent 13. Why 13? What is 13? It's E. What's E? Public. It's a public key. All right. So how you do that? Plain text is 5. C, 5, which is the plain text to the power 13 mod. Okay. Mod how much? Mod how much? N. How much N? 77. 77. We'll give you 26. So what is it 26? It's a ciphertext. Yeah. It's a ciphertext, right? Alright. Now, 
for decryption, what you have to do, 26, which is a cipher text, to the power of 37. What is 37? D, which is the private key, will give you what? That's encryption decryption. So encryption decryption, very easy algorithms. Where is the trick? In calculating the private and and they have to work together. Okay? According to the algorithm. According to the algorithm. So in here let's take another example. Okay, now I see that another person, John, wants to send a message to Bob. John can use the same public key announced by Bob. Public key. Um, okay, 13. John's plane takes a 63, right? So you have in here 63 to power 13. Gave you how much? 28. Now Bob receives the 28, which is in here, and it can use the same private key. Okay, gave you 63. So this pair gonna work in any plain text and cipher text. It will work, right? All right. All right. So let's take a trivial examples. Jennifer creates a pair of keys for herself. She chooses P, this number. Q, this number. Both are bright. Both are bright. She calculates N, multiplying this by this gave you that big number. She then calculates phi n, gave you that number. She then chooses 3, 4, 3, and d, this number. So e and d. Show how Ted can send a message to Jennifer if he knows e and n. If he knows e and n. What's e? The public key. And n is other part of the public key. Okay, so suppose it wants to send a message, no, to Jennifer, the change is each character to a number. So from, from you know, 0025, with each character coded as two digits, he then calculates the two coded characters and get four digit numbers. The plain text will be 1314. Okay, 1314 is, or four, yeah, will be, will be the number. Okay, so what we have in here, we have the plain text, we have the E, we have the D, we have the N, right? All right, so very simple in here. Ted, there is no. The plain text is 1314. So 1314 to the power of E. Mod N gives you C. And here, you'll have C to the power of D. Mod N give you the same thing. Yes? Are we going to carry out this kind of calculations in the exam? Huh? Are we going to carry out this kind of calculations in the exam? No, much bigger than this. I'll show you in a second. Are we going to use calculator or...? No, you have to learn how to do multiplication. This is, you know, did you read what, what we said before in here? Trivia example. I'll show you what you're going to do in the exam in a second. Okay? This is a trivia example. I'll show you in a second what you're gonna do in the exam. Okay? All right. So you understand the algorithm how it works? Yeah. Okay. Now this section talks about the problems, and, and I'm gonna skip it for a second because I'm gonna show my friend how is real data. That's what you're gonna do in the exam. In the real life, that's the plain text. You see how much? CP. <laughs> All right. And that's a Q. Okay. Q. And that's n. You multiply q with n, and the phi n. That's a phi n. That's real life, right? Phi n. And that's e. And that's d. And you have to do it in the exam without the calculator. <laughs> right. So let's take example. That's a plain text, and that's a cyber text we're gonna create with that P and Q and M. That's the cyber text. From that to here, okay? And 
undisciplined text. Okay? Happy? <laughs> Happy? Okay? So we'll continue our next lecture. Okay? Continue the next lecture. But that's RSA. RSA, one of the most algorithms used for asymmetric encryption. Okay? And we're gonna talk about three more asymmetric, asymmetric uh, encryption techniques. A little bit, you know, different than RSA, but there is many of them. In this class, we'll talk about maybe four total. Okay, but you got the idea. The idea is you have to have an algorithm to generate the keys. The keys are two: public and private. All right. And then encryption and then decryption. And the same. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so I learned that RSA is one of the first um, arithmetic um, asymmetric asymmetric um, encryption mode. Is it still in use in this modern age? Absolutely. Remember the first slide what we said? Symmetric and asymmetric they complement each other. They use for different applications. I mean you cannot use one without the other. So for digital signature, that's what we use. We did use symmetry. We'll come to it. So definitely, I mean that's that's used every day. They complement each other. There is different applications for it. Digital signature, for example. How you can create digital signature? Do you know what's digital signature? Huh? Yeah, so using RSA. Okay. Hard disk hard disk encryption, what are you gonna use? Symmetric. Symmetric. Yes or this or triple this or whatever it is. Okay, different applications. Okay, I'll see you Thursday. Thank you. Hi everyone. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so uh, today we'll continue uh, asymmetric. So we started last week. We could not finish a chapter. It's a little bit longer. So um, we introduce you to asymmetric encryption and we compared it with uh, symmetric. Uh, 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 so just to refresh your memory. What we have, uh, we have Bob would like to, uh, I'm sorry, Alice would like to send a message to Bob. So she has to encrypt the data using Bob's private, key. private or public? Oh, public, key. public key. Yes. Public key. It will be sent to Bob. Bob could reopen the, the yes, message yes. or create the message using the private mm -hmm. key. So that's the general idea. So in here, usually get how many algorithms we're going to have? Three. Three algorithms. The first algorithm for key generation, for second the algorithm for encryption, encryption, third for decryption. decryption. So usually encryption and decryption algorithms are simple. Okay, uh, the key generation is where is the, you know, uh, the complexity comes. Okay, so how can you generate uh, the key? So generally speaking, that we have a function. So if you need to get the, uh, the get the uh, cyber, so you have a function using the key public and you apply it into the plain text and you have another uh, algorithm G to reverse it at the side. So the most important thing, we have to have a pair of keys, the public key and the private key and that's where is the, uh, the track. All right, so we emphasized last time that we're going to need both kind of encryption Okay, in real life, we need symmetric and we need asymmetric. They have different applications. Symmetric uh, encryption, like triple this, this, uh, ES, um, used for uh, for encrypting big data. Okay, whether it's a stream or a block. In here, it's used to for different applications, such as um, uh, signature. Okay, digital signature um, uh, and different uh, things. All right, so. Generally speaking, what we're going to have, we're going to have a function, one-way function with a trap door. We have to have a trap door. If we have one-way function without a trap door, it's not going to work. So how can you create the trap door? Last time we gave a few examples for the trap door, one-way function. Um, uh, we gave multiple examples. So I'm sure you understand the concept uh, 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 very well. So that's the concept in general, right? Yeah. And then after that, we start talking about RSA cryptography. And we said that, you see the algorithm in here is very simple. So you are given um, uh, 
the, uh, the, the, the public key which is E and N which is the modulo modulo and we have the private key D so the encry encryption and decryption algorithms are very simple the trick is how we can find a pair of keys that could work together if you encrypt with one you could decrypt with the other one okay that's the whole trick okay so uh, very simple the algorithm is uh, last time that you have to select p and a q p and a q they should be large large what okay wait what should be large what prime keys it should be large prime keys you create n and that would be the modulo you multiply them together and then you select E and D. What's E? Okay, E is from the, uh, you know, uh, uh, will, D will be the multiplicative inverse uh, for E in the uh, phi n. All right, so you make D as a private and you make E and N as the public key. And this is the encryption and this is the decryption. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to ask, is it ever possible to use the private key like in place of um, Alice using the public key, yeah, can Bob lock like encrypt with his one key and still come to the other side to use his key? Is it possible to use the private key to encrypt and decrypt on both sides? When you lock the data with one key, you have to unlock it with the other key. Mm -hmm. All right. So Bob, if he gives his private key to Alice, it's not private key anymore. All right, so you know, but it could be used like what you said. We'll see as a digital signature. Okay, so for example, um, if if uh, Bob would like to send a data to Alice, okay, and wants to make an assure that it's Bob, so he could uh, could you know uh, uh, encrypt part of the data, okay. Uh, uh, to show that he did that. We'll, we'll see that later, okay? But this is the general theme, right? Anyways, so we explained how it works, and we said, and we gave you enough examples, and at the end, uh, we looked in here how it is in real life. So P is a, a prime key, but it's big, huge, all right? It's not a short like we did it for experimental, right? And the Q, okay? So look at N when you multiply, P times Q, the phi n becomes like that, okay? And E is that number, and the multiplicative inverse this number for it, right? So it's a clearly, it's a very complex and intensive. So usually you use it for as much. So if you need, this is the plan, plain text to create the cipher is P to the, so this number to the power of E, which is in here, okay? It will give you the C, this all the C. All right, and you could reverse the, the, the process, okay? RSA is the most common asymmetry. Okay, there is a few others, lightweight. Let's take a look at them. That's what we'll cover this time, quickly, how they work. So the Robin crypto, crypto system can be thought of an RSA crypto system in which the value of E and D are fixed. In RSA, we have to choose E and D. In here, they are fixed. So the <coughs> encryption is C mm -hmm. modulo P2. So what is the public key? It's two. 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 All right. And the decryption is one half. Okay. So, right. So it's, it's known. All right. All right. So what you do in here, the wrapping. Okay. So the same thing. You select P and a Q. P a prime, Q and uh, a prime. Multiply them together. The private key becomes P and Q. P and Q, right? E and D is already known, all right? And and um, uh, so that will be the, uh, the 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 private key. What is a public key? Two. It's already known, right? It's already known. So what we do for encryption in here? So the cipher equals P to power two mod n. Okay, n, which is calculated by multiplying p and q. So anybody cannot know p and q because they cannot know n because they don't know p and q. 
So you select P and Q, we cannot know N, and so uh, and when it goes in here, you do a quadratic residue and you, you try to uh, uh, calculate it as okay. All right. So for key generation, again the algorithm in here for key generation, you choose two larger primes P and Q, and we saw how large are the primes. Okay. Okay. From and the condition we have to use them from four uh, K plus three and P does not equal Q. Even an RSA, P cannot equal a Q, right? So, N equals P times Q. The public key will be N. The public key will be N. Okay, everybody will know N, but then you don't know how to divide it in P and Q, right? It will be, you could try to do that if it's a very large N, to try to find P and Q, it might need you 100 years to find it out. Okay, all right. And the public key is N, uh, and it will be announced publicly. And the private key is a Q and N, is uh, a Q uh, and N, to be kept secret. All right? And return public key and private. That's for key generation. That's for encryption, and then very simple. And that's for uh, decryption. So for decryption, uh, you're going to, I mean, we have covered Chinese theorem. So you're trying in, in, in here what, what you'll do in decryption. Uh, so you're going to create four parameters, A1 equals C. Um, I cannot see. Uh, plus uh, 1B plus... Uh, RSA you have one answer and here you're gonna have four answers so the answer will not be one of the four is correct so the answer is not deterministic it's not deterministic right so in Chinese remainder you're gonna get four solutions it returns p1 p2 p3 p4 one of them has to be correct so when somebody sends you a message you decrypt it you have to have a sense what could be the right one as you have to have a sense all right so the, the, the rapid uh, crypto system is not deterministic. The encryption creates four layer text. One of them is correct. You should know it. All right. You should know it. Yes. Is there any like hints that the sender will give the person to like know that the correct one will be like this way or that way? That is question. there a hint? Is there a hint? Yeah. For, no, I mean, for example, I need to send you a message, right? Okay, it's encrypted. Uh, and when and when you decrypt it, you have for, for the the class. The class will be will be uh, delayed. That's the message. Okay, okay. By delayed, the first answer by five minutes. The second answer by two hours. The fourth answer by ten hours. The five fifth answer by twenty hours. Which one would be mostly the, the correct? Five minutes. Right? You have to have a sense. So it's not deterministic. It's not deterministic, right? All right? That's why we have to use it. Why we have to use not deterministic? Why we have RSA? Because it's lighter. It's much more lighter. Remember, RSA is like heavy one. So could be used. So here is a very trivial yeah, example. Uh, uh, show the idea. So Bob selects P equals 23. Q7. You multiply it together. 
okay? Um, and both are congruent to 3 and 0.4. Uh, Bob calculates n, which is 161. Bob announces n as a boplet. He keeps p and the q prime. Alice wants to send the plane text, which is 24. That's the plane text, 24. Note that 161 and 24 are relatively prime. That's our condition. I mean, the message has to be relatively prime to what? To n, right? It has to be relatively prime. So 24 is in Z161 asterisk. That means it's co-prime or uh, it's um, uh, it's um, Right? So there is a limited of kind of messages you can send also. So you only can send relatively, relatively, uh, uh, relatively prime data. So there is a limitation, okay, of the type of the data, right? So you calculate C, which is 24, power 2 equals 93, mod 161, 161, which is the N, and send the ciphertext, which is 93. So what's the original data? 24. What is the cyber? Is 93. Now when you receive it, you have to build the Chinese reminder equations, four equations, give you four answers. Okay? So that's A1, A2, B1, B2. Okay? All right? In here. So uh, Bob takes four possible answers, A1, B1, A1, B2, A2, B1, and A2, B2, and uses the Chinese reminder theorem to find four possible plain text. What are the four solutions for these equations? Go to chapter 94 if you forgot uh, Chinese reminder. 116, 124, 137, 45. These are four solutions. One of them is a correct answer. Which one? 24. 24 in red, right? Okay. Note that only the second answer Alice's plain text. All right. So what is the weaknesses of this? There is a limitation in the data you could send, the plain text, and there is for answers, so it's not deterministic. What is the advantage? Lightweight. It's lightweight. Okay. Let's talk about a very another another uh, technique called algenal crypto system. So it's um, um, uh, it's a public key uh, crypto system. Uh, it's based on the discrete logarithmic problem. Okay, so here is how, how there's three algorithms again generation, encryption, decryption. So for generation, so you select P, very large prime, then you select E1, primitive root, all right, then you select digit D, and a digit D. You calculate E2, okay, which equals E1, which you choose. Of, uh, uh, to the power d, which you choose, mod p, which you choose. All right. So you take d, which you have chosen, as a private key, and what is are the public key e1, e2, p, e1. Okay. So e2 could be calculated if the guys know d, but nobody knows d. D is your <laughs> private key. Right. And P is chosen, E1 is chosen, D is taken, E2 is calculated. Simple. Okay? Now for encryption, very simple. So you take the plain text, you're going to create two ciphertexts, C1 and C2. That's how it is. Two ciphertexts. And you're going to send two ciphertexts to generate one plain text. So very simple, C1 equals E1, which is given to you, to the power R, you choose, random number, okay, in here, mod P, P is given to you as part of the key, and C2 equals E2 to the power R, same R, multiply with a plain text. So where is the plain text? Here. Mod P. You send a tuple of T, C1 and C2. P equals C2 multiply C1 to the power d inverse, mod p will give you p. That's how the, how the rule, we could prove it, we don't have to go over the proof, just know how that's how it works, right? Yes? So professor, here the private key is not hidden, because you know, private key can be uh, calculated from, I mean, at the side of encryption side, I mean. Because private key is d. Yeah, d, but you know, from uh, 
during encryption we know what is e2 yes and we know what is p and we also know what is e1 so it's a, yeah it's a, i mean it would be very complex to complicate the, if you have e1 what well, that's what you say yeah. you have p you have e1 you have e2 can you calculate d yeah, you could after 100 years. Yes, so, <laughs> so yeah. at the side of encryption, but it can be calculated. So, I mean, it's not private then, you know. It, it's a private, remember but the private means that, that it, you cannot <coughs> figure it out within a reasonable amount of time. Mm -hmm. So, remember that P is a huge number. E2, E1 will be huge numbers. To be able to calculate D again, you have to have a supercomputer to calculate it within days. So it's it's kind of that's the whole idea. The whole idea is uh, okay. So for example, if uh, let me tell you, if you if you have a password, your computer password, okay, it's built of uh, uh, sixteen characters, right, right. So if I have a dictionary attack, can I figure your password? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Dictionary attack. I have all the combinations, all of that. How long is it going to take? It's going to take a while. It took a while. Yeah. A million years, maybe. <laughs> Would it look okay? So, so uh, you know, uh, uh, by that time, you are not alive, right? Who cares if somebody knows your, your password? Yeah. So that's the whole idea. The idea is not that, you know, 100% of possible somebody know, but if they cannot figure it out within a reasonable amount of time. All right, so uh, you know th that's what it is, right? So, but you're right. I mean, her question. Let me repeat her question. She says that you know, D. If you know, if if I have E1, E2, B, I can know D. Yes, but how? And how? What? How long? All right. That's the whole idea. Okay. So this is the algorithm for generation. Okay, I don't have to go over it. This is for encryption and decryption. So the bit operation complexity of, in, of encryption or decryption in algebraic encryption is polynomial. Polynomial. Okay, let's take example if there's example. Here is an, a, a trivial example. Pop chooses P11. Remember, this is a trivial. P is, is like two, uh, 300 digits usually. Right? Okay? And you didn't choose it yourself. Who chooses for you? The program. The, 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 okay? And E1 is 2, and D3, E2 equals E1 to power D, which is 8, right? 2 to power 3 equals 8. So the public key are, what are 2, 8, 11, right? Okay, which is, what is it? E1, E2, and P. And the private key is D. What is D? 3. three. Alice chooses R4 and calculate C1 and C2 for plain text. So C1, it was 5. C2, 6. The ciphertext is 5 and 6. You said 5 and 6. Okay? So Bob receives the ciphertext 5 and 6 and calculates the plain text with, the, with the, the formula and gave you 7. 7 was the plain text. Okay? 7 is the plain text. So instead of using um, uh, using P equals C2 and C1 to power D inverse mode 4, for decryption we can avoid the calculation of multiplicative inverse and use C2 times C1 to the power P minus 1 D mode, mode B. This is from Fermat's Little Theorem we explained in chapter 9. Okay, you could use this format or you could use this format will give you the, the same result. All right, which one is? So for the algebraic uh, crypto system, P must be at least 300 digits. That answers your question. I mean, yeah, it's for sure to write, okay? And R must be new for each in some All right. So this is an example, real life example. This is P, the P prime number you choose. This is E12. This is D, okay? And E becomes very long, E2. Okay, so when you the plain text, this plain text, you choose this as an R, C1, C2, you send C1 and C2, okay, and when you do the process, it will give you the plain text back, 3200. Okay? Write the C code to see how it works. Right, okay, it's right. Okay, so, even entering the numbers, it's gonna take you, I mean, I mean, it's okay, so. All right.
Then we come a very, for a lighter one, elliptic curve, you'll see this uh, algorithm used like in wireless sensor networks, in RFID, because it's much more lighter, okay? Uh, you're doing, uh, you're doing right, uh, all right, all right, wait, right, okay. So, uh, uh, although RSA and al -Jamal are secure, asymmetric key crypto systems, their security comes with a price. They're large key, keys. The, you saw the large keys, right? Researchers have looked for uh, alternatives that give the same level of security with the smaller key sizes. One of these promising alternatives is the elliptic curve crypto systems, which is ECC, famous for ECC. All right? I'm sure some of you are going to use it in his research because that's what we are doing for, uh, for that. So, the general equation for an elliptic curve, you know it's elliptic, elliptic curve, right? The elliptic curve, right? The general is this, y squared plus bxy plus b2y equals whatever. So that's the, from math, that's the general equation for any elliptic, right? We don't want to have this complex, so elliptic curves over real numbers use a special class of elliptic curve, this one. y squared equals x cubic plus axp. So how many variables we have? Two, x and y. And it's a cubic equation. It's not, you know, a uh, square equation. It's a cubic because you have x over three. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so that's the... So when you look in here, uh, figure 10 and 12 shows two elliptic curves with, e with equations y squared equals x cubed minus 4x. So these, this equation, I mean when you substitute x and y, will give you this, this uh, figure, right? And y squared e uh, x cubed minus 1. Okay, and put in here. Both are non-singular. What is non-singular? That means it gives you three solutions, three real-time solutions. Why three solutions? Because it's so you have a square equation, how many solutions do you have? Two. two. Cubic and three. three. So non-singular gives you three different solutions. That's what non-singular. Okay. Um, however, the first has a three real roots, which is x uh, minus two, x zero, and x two. So in here, for example, x minus two, zero, all right? And in here, two, all right? That's what it is. The solution it intersects with the x-axis. So as you see in here, minus two, zero, and two, right? Three real roots. What's the root? The root that intersects with the x-axis, right? But the second has only one real root, which is x1, in here. And two imaginary ones, two imaginary ones that you can see, all right? So, if, okay, so uh, uh, three adding cases in R. So this is, for example, R. If you add P and Q, if you add P and Q, will give you R. And minus R. And minus R is the, the image of it is R. In here, if you add P and P, will give you R. The image is minus R. And then here, O, which is the identity if you add it to itself. So P and minus P. P and minus P. You know, an additive P and minus P will give you what? Zero. Zero, right? And this we call the zero. It will, it will, it will give you, um, it will give you, um, uh, the, the, the Y will be how much? Zero. Zero. Okay. So three uh, addition possible. So, so in here, when you connect P to Q, it, it will continue until it intersects. Intersects, that will be the addition, right? So we need to calculate the slope. The slope here, the slope here, the slope in here, right? So in the first case, the slope, you know the slope, right? So two, two points, it's like you might, uh, y2 minus 1 over x1. Okay. And then if you need to calculate the, the R, where is the R in here? Which built off X, 
So this, for example, B, P in here, it's X1, Y1. This is X2, Y2. The R is X3, Y3, right? Right? So you need to calculate. So to calculate that, X3 will be this equation using, uh, we don't have to prove it here, just we need to know it. And Y3 equals this. All right? So from two points, we're able to know the third, third point, right? By, you know, this. In the second case in here, I'm sorry, in the second case, the same thing is P and P, all right? The slope calculated this way, and the third point, X and Y, calculate this way. You understand? So, so what we are doing in here, just make sure. So we have P, P, which is X1, Y1, right? And Q, I think we call it Q, yeah, Q, which is X2, and Y2, right? If we add R equals P plus Q, right? Okay, which will equals point, which is X3, Y3. To be able to calculate it, like from geometry, right? What you have to know, the slope, which we call it in here, lambda, okay? And these are the equations, okay, without the proof for you in here. This is in the first case, second case. In the third case, which is in here, okay, the intercepting point is at infinity. It will intercept the curve at infinity. A point O as the point at infinity or zero point, which is the additive identity of the group. Additive identity of the group. All right. All right. So in here, when you add it to yourself, add it to yourself, it will give you the identity. And in here, we add it P to P. Okay. And and these are the equations how to calculate the third point. So you have a point in the curve. You add a point to it in the curve, it has to give you a third point where? On the curve. Right? So, we need to find the inverse. What is the inverse we are using in here? The inverse of a point xy is x minus y, like in here. Okay? So, the inverse of this will be here. So, in y. Okay? So, the x, the inverse, the inverse of a point xy is x minus y, where minus y is the additive inverse of y. For example, if p equals 13, the inverse p equals 13, the inverse of uh, 4, 2 is 4, 11. Why? Because 2, uh, 2 plus 11, how much? 13. Mod, uh, 13. Mod 13 will give you 0. All right. Remember that in a cryptography, always we use mod, module, right? So the inverse of this point, x is fixed, and y, 2 plus, plus, plus 11, mod 13 will give you 0. All right? Finding points on the curve. Okay, algorithm 10 and 12 shows the pseudo code for finding the points in the... Okay, so you have... This is the equation. So it's the module is B and, one, and A and B. Two, uh, which is x and y. All right. Let's take example in here. So in here, for example, so the equation is y square equals x cube plus x plus one, and the calculation is done modulo thirteen. All right. So for example, points in the, so what's the module in here thirteen? So p is zero. This is the inverse, right? Zero zero x one plus twelve. 13. Mod 13 will give you 0. So P and so 1 and 12. So 1 and 12. These are inverse of each other, right? You agree? The second one is here. For example, 4, four plus 9. 13. 13 is the same thing. So you see, so this inverse of this, this inverse, so the colors are clear. So this in here, blue, this is. Brown, inverse of each other, right? This is in the uh, in the curve. Okay, points on the elliptic curve. All right. Professor, can you explain the seven zero seven zero? 
Well, so, so the same thing. The inverse of seven of zero, seven zero is itself. So zero minus zero plus zero, zero minus thirteen, zero. zero. So that's the inverse itself, right? So p in this case p equals minus p. All right. So let us add two points in uh, an example. To, so, for example, so the idea here is we're trying to create a field. If you add point to a point, it will give you point on the curve, right? So let's add uh, p and q, where p four and two, where is four and two here, and q is ten and six, ten and six, where is ten and six? Yeah. So if we add this to this, what will give us? Okay. So we have first to calculate what? The slope. We have the rule, right? We showed you the rule before. Let me show you the rules in here, right? You calculate the, the slope, where is it? You calculate the slope, k of u five. You calculate x and y, 11 and two. So r is 11 and two, which is a point on the curve as an example. Where is 11 and two in here? So when we added this, when we added uh, 4 and 2 and 10 and 6, 4 and 2 and 10 and 6 gave me what? 11 and 2. So we added two points on the curve, gave you a, bo a point onto the curve. Last one should be, should be 8. Which one? 12. 5 and 8. Uh, 12 and 18. Uh, this should be 8? It yeah. should be 8? Yeah, 12, 12 8. Alright, so R is 11, 2, which is a point on the curve as an example, right? <clears throat> so, so this is, what we are, we're talking about is elliptic curve over P, over GFP, field of P, right? What are the characteristics of, uh, of a field? Closure, assertivity, identity, Inverse. five, right? Five, five. We already saw that, right? You could do it also, okay, over uh, 2 to power n as a polynomial. All right, a little bit more complex, but you know, uh, to define an electric curve over GF, uh, 2 to power n, uh, one needs to change the, cu uh, the cubic equation. The common equation is this. All right, so finding inverses if p, x, y, then minus p will be x, x plus y. Before it was minus, right? And here it's okay. All right. Find a point of the, on the curve. We can write an algorithm to find the points on the curve uh, using generators for polynomials. So we remember. Anyways, so uh, p equals x y. The reverse would be x and x plus y. Okay. So here I have an example. So we choose. Uh, to power three, so there's eight options, or eight generators options. Just you know, just go to the chapter where we we'll talk about generators. Okay, so the elements are zero, one, g, g square up to g six. So these are eight. There's two to power three. Using the uh, reducible polynomial, you choose this polynomial. You always we choose a reducible from the list of the reducible polynomials. Okay, which means that okay. Uh, this equals zero and g equals okay. Other parts of g can be calculated accordingly. So this is the table. Let's calculate it for you. Zero, one, g squared, okay, and then g cubic. You know, this generated from g plus g one, g plus one, right? This generated from g squared plus. You understand? So you know, from 
0, 1, G, which are in here until G, 6, 8 elements. So, using the elliptic curve, which we have chosen, okay, we could see in here, for example, this is P equals minus P. You could calculate, for example, in here, P, 0, 1, 0, 1, the inverse. There is nothing in the 1, okay? In the G square 1, okay, G square 1, the inverse would be uh, G square G6, right? To the end. So the question is, if we add any of these two points, will get you another point in the curve? That's the whole trick, right? To be closure, right? So the rules adding two points, if P equals X, Y, 1, and Y, 1, and the Q, X, 2, Y, 2, they are not equal to each other or reverse each other, R is calculated of X, 3, Y, 3, and these are the rules. First thing, you have to calculate the slope, X, 3, and Y, 3. We don't have to prove it in this, okay, just the rules, all right? And if Q equals, so this in here, if Q does not equal minus P and Q does not equal B. In here, if it equals, you, you calculate it from this rules. That's how you calculate the slope, and that's how you calculate X, and that's how you calculate Y. Y3, right? Let's take example. Let us find R, which is P plus Q, where P is 0, 1, and the Q, G2, 1, and the slope is 0 where the slope is zero, R will equals G to power five, G to power four, okay, which is in here, which is a point on the curve. Okay, so the, the closure is there. Now, if they are equal to each other, so what does it mean multiplication? What multiplication means? When you multiply two by P, what does it mean? You add it to itself one time. Yeah. If you multiply by three, three times. So, so it's like you know, adding multiple times, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's how you think. So two p that means like, again, the rules in here for you if they are equal. You see them in here. That's the slope. That's how you calculate. And again, it will give you r, which is part of the curve, right? So let's use it for al for Al Jamal. I mean, see how to use it for Al Jamal. Okay, same thing. Okay, so in here we get a simulating Al Jamal. So Al Jamal crypto system using the elliptic curves. So what you do? Select E P E P A and B. All right. What's P is the modulo. A and P is the. You know where's A and B coming from, right? From here. A and B, right? A and B in the equation. You can choose one equation, right? Right? And then you select E1, which is X1 and Y1. It's a point on the curve. And then you select D. What's D? A digit. Remember? That's what you use Al Jaman. You have to select E1 and then D and you calculate what? E2. E2 equals what? The digit multiplied with E1. So you're going to add e, E1 to itself D times. Okay? D times. So we use, okay? Right? And the public key is again E1, E2, and the EP. Okay? EP before, in Al-Jabal, what we put in here, if you remember? N, right? Right? N. And the same process you do it in all of that. Okay, the EAP, the E1, the D, E2, the encryption, the decryption. Okay. So the security of the ECC depends on the difficulty of solving the, the elliptic curve algorithm. Here is the example, here is a very trivial example of decipherment using an elliptic curve over uh, GFP. G 
So Bob selects E67, so this is P, right? 2 or 3. 2 is A, 3 is B, right? Okay, and 67 is P, the P, right? The module, right? As elliptic curve. Bob selects E1, which is 222, point on the curve, and D4. So, for, then after that, what you have to do, you uh, calculate E2. E2 equals to what? D, E1. That means you can add this E1 to itself how many times? Four times. Okay? So, Bob Public announced that E, E1, E2. Alice wants to send a plain text. This is a plain text, which is a point on the curve stone. Right? To Bob, she selects R2. That's the wrong. Uh, uh, So, uh, I don't have the, the next slide, it's in here, if you look at uh, example 1011, then after that Alice finds the C1, Alice finds the C2 with the rules we applied, sends it and then could reverse it, okay? So it's just follow, follow we, get, we have to follow the steps. So this now, this, this was the process for generating the key. We're gonna and send it and reverse it and all of that. So that's what it is. So as you see in here, we have uh, covers a uh, few algorithms for asymmetric, right? RSA is still the most used. The only problem with RSA is it's not. It's you need a huge key. Okay. Uh, so for many applications, you need a light key, like. Electric, uh, electric, electric uh, curve. Uh, curve. Okay, so uh, and there is two in between that you know little bit weaker, but they are lighter, little bit lighter, mm -hmm. and maybe there is a lot other algorithms. Okay, and you could develop your own algorithm one day. You never know. That's the whole idea. All right. Thank you so much.